Hey, this is Glendon with Making Money with Storage and Auctions. The title of this segment, Storage Auction Morality and Karma. I was perusing, yeah, yesterday I spent all day answering emails and responding, and I still have two, I, I went back to Tuesday. So, Monday, and uh, but next week I'm going to actually dedicate a lot of time to answering all those emails and cleaning up a lot of loose data. And I saw this one response on YouTube and I was just like you're going through these people's stuff and you're laughing and the morality and the karma and it's just not right and I was just like what is it with these people in this country that don't get it you just simply don't get it I mean well, what's the what's the other what's the other way to go just say hey you know what you haven't paid your bill we're gonna give you your stuff back and we're going to take a write down. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Bullshit, that's not going to happen. Look, this is the thing that I think you fail to understand. When someone goes in and rents a storage unit, there is a very long, sometimes thick contract. When you sign that contract, stipulating to the fact that if you fall short on your rent, They've reserved the express right to sell your shit. This is one of the things that happens to people who do not read contracts. It's that simple. And as for karma, I don't really believe in karma. I believe in cause and effect and reciprocity. Karma is, a, to me, this thing that people say when they can't really make... Sometimes, bad people do bad shit the good people and win. Example? Sure. There are a lot of guys who contributed to the mortgage meltdown that threw the world, not just the United States, but the world in a great recession. Many of those guys received bonuses last year because they worked for companies that were bailed out by yours truly, you, the public. You were bailed out. So, in effect, a bunch of guys that did wrong were massively rewarded for crying. Essentially, I'm not sitting in the church pew going, well, mm -hmm. singing spirit, old spirit, Negro spirituals thinking things going to be well in the next life. Uh, I'm concerned about this life. And right now, people are getting away with murder, crime, massive theft. If the economy hadn't gone bad, Madoff would still be percolating right along doing the same shit he's been doing for the last 20 years. He got exposed because many, many other people were exposed. And as he put out in an interview recently, the banks had to know. They had to. To earn that type of interest consistently is just implausible. But back to storage auction morality. This is my take on it. When I first got into business, you know, it was like, God, you know, you, you see a baby picture or a christening gown and you just get all tore up. But after taking that stuff back and a lot of those folks not even showing up to reclaim it, it said to me they felt the same way about those precious mementos that they felt about everything else in the unit. They didn't give a damn. They didn't really care. And the namby-pamby people, such as those who the morality and the karma just don't get it. We are, you know, evolution... Natural selection, Darwin, big fish, eat the little fish. That is in full effect right now. And if you are a little fish and you're in the fishbowl and you, for some reason, when you had the chance to jump out the fishbowl and you didn't build your own pond, you're screwed. You are just absolutely screwed. Because the morality of this thing is, if you don't take care of your business, you don't take care of your stuff, you're going to lose it. Let's talk about another morality clause. Whenever a company, huge company, small company, suffers losses or has to go out of business, contracts that the management of that company put into play, signed off on, simply if you can't pay us this money, we have the right to come in and sell this stuff. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. I mean, people get really excited. Hey, there's a liquidation sale on Beaufort Highway. Yay! I'm going to get me some stuff cheap. Nobody really cares about the morality of... A lot of people got hurt 
to produce that action. Seriously, there have been business owners who've lost their homes. Why? Because market turn, made some poor decisions, didn't pay some bills. It happened. To me, it's the same thing. If you are foolish enough, and I'm gonna, yeah, I said that, foolish enough to put stuff in storage and leave it in there long term and you don't have the financial wherewithal to, to make sure that, that someone like me never buys your shit, oh, tough titty. Absolutely tough, leathery, powdered milk dry titty. That's the deal. Because this thing is going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Property values just took another little dip downward. That means, you know what that means? That inventory is still high. And to think, for the last two years, building has, what, been cut in half? 70%? You know, a lot of builders, a lot of construction work, a lot of tile uh, cutters, cabinet makers, they can't find work. They're doing whatever they can to make ends meet. And, uh, it ain't happening because I don't think that level of construction is ever going to come back because it should have never been that high. The thing I should say that I'm trying, the point I'm trying to make is when you put yourself in a position where you have a lot of things you really do not need, why are you going to get mad if you lose them? Why? You don't need that stuff. Uh, you know, I've become somewhat of a social scientist when going through these units because I would see stuff and you know, you, you get this chick stuff and she has 10 pairs of the same exact shoe in different colors. Or eight of the same shirt in different colors. All brand new with the price tag still on it in a storage unit. Or let's talk about those letters, uh, movies, homemade porn, and the stuff that I read and I laugh about. Yep. Because, you know, I keep a diary. Sure do. Are you going to get a chance to read that? Not unless I choose to publish it. Why? Because I have made sure no one can get to it. I have said this. I said this. Do not put sensitive information in a storage unit. Let's say you're not falling behind on your rent. People break into storage units. I have found everything from social security cards, active driver's license, active credit cards, birth certificates, I mean, what people leave in there is an identity thief's dream. I mean, you get everything. Current, past, you know, past address, whatever. So, you know, while you're sitting there thinking about the morality of this, while you're thinking about the karma, know that a lot of people who got fucked over will not ever have any redemption unless they take it upon themselves. Not going to happen. Another thing that really, really cracks me up about some of these responses that I get from people who come in about the morality, is it the right thing to do to let someone's stuff be sold, is this holier-than-thou attitude. Because... If you live in this country, and chances are if you're commenting on my videos, you live in this country, you have benefited from the same type of legal action that allows a storage facility to sell and liquidate the contents of a storage unit in your own personal life. But you're not bitching about that. What's up with that? The crux of the matter is, this is something that can affect you. It hits home. It's something you may be financially strapped right now. You may be on the verge of losing your unit. So now, since it's in your face, since it's come home, since the chickens are going cock-a-doodle-doo, it's like, that's wrong. That's wrong. You shouldn't do that. That shouldn't happen. This is America. Where's the humanity? Kiss my ass on that. Please. Kiss my brown ass on that. Because as long as the getting is good for you, none of this shit even matter. You didn't even care. 
I can tell by the posture of the response what the person's going through. Because if your life was going well, you wouldn't give a damn. That is the state of America. That's how we live in the country where someone, another human being, another child of God, could be in the gutter and you in your Manano, Balanox, in your Bali, or your Prada shoes would lift your right foot and step over that bum, then lift your left foot and continue on your stroll, not breaking stride, and there's a human being in the gutter. Because why? That's not your situation. That doesn't impact your life, so you're not moved. Well, guess what? This Great Recession has put a lot of people in the position where those mononos need to be sold, the Prada needs to be sold, because if you don't sell them, you're going to be in that gutter. This is the deal. And also, if you're going to leave a comment, rewatch the video. You sued someone. You know, you got $8,000 for a bedroom set that was worth a couple of hundred. Let me go to the right. People that say stuff like that tell me a lot. Number one, you don't know anything about antiques. You don't know anything about business. I have sold used old ass bedroom sets but because they were made by a certain person, made in a certain period, and classified as vintage as antique, two, three, four grand. And it was old. So fool, stop with that stuff. Also, I'm beginning to realize that I'm dealing with a lot of people who've never hit hard times. This is their first, you know, this first time really feeling the heat of lack of money and pov you know, poverty, dire circumstances. And I, I'm, it's coming through in the comments because there the people, there are people who like the shows, there are people that like the business, and there are people that hate the business. It doesn't really seem to be any middle ground. It's like either you're all in or you like, I hate that stuff. And the people that hate it, and I get several emails. You know, years ago I lost my unit. Um, you know, I'm still suffering. I've heard some hard luck stories. But the reality of the matter is, this is life in the United States. And up until it impacted you, you didn't give a damn. So all of a sudden, now it's, we need to do something. We, I'm going to give you a great example of how this country works. And I'm going to use race. You know, I don't really go into that because I don't really believe in the construct of race because we're all humans. Because, you know... A giraffe can't mate with a lion. It doesn't work because they're two different species. But every background can mate with every background and produce a child. So we're all the same. But during the first health care reform, I used to work at Northside Hospital. I was part of that health care thing. And life was good before health care reform came. Life was great. What brought health care reform to head? Now let's look at the time period. That was like the early 90s. What happened in the early 90s? A recession. What happened? And one of the docs said it. He said, health care reform didn't really become an issue until white people started showing up at Grady. Damn. And there it was. So all this reform and revolution, nothing changes until it touches you. As long as your life is fine, as long as things are good, you can give a damn. So, to the person who left that comment about karma and morality, I have to say this to you. Get over yourself. Whatever tough economic period that you're going through, know at some point it'll be over. Right now, while you're going through it, you don't want to hear that shit. Because right now, this is your reality. Every day you deal with it, probably can't sleep. Life is tough. So, you're going to just lash out at someone like me who's doing okay, you know, who's having fun. But only I paid my dues because I have learned how this country works. I know how the, the rules of engagement and I govern my life by those rules of engagement because if I go contrary, I'll end up like you. It is This country is not for the little guy. It is not for the little guy. Like this deal, case in point, a lot of older people were sold. No, I'm sorry. They were lied to. If you trade 20, 25, 30 years of your life for this company, we're going to give you a pension. And it's guaranteed until you die. And if you're married, when you die, your wife gets your pension. That was the deal. 
and when this country had more honor and integrity, that deal was unbroken. Now we have politicians who want to say, you know what, hey, I know you made this promise 20, 30 years ago, but hey, look, we're going to start charging uh, taxes on your pension. Oh, uh, we're going to actually cut your pension. You know what, screw you. You, yeah, you kept your end of the bargain. Thank you. But you know what? Guess what? Times are hard. We need to make cuts and you're easy because you have no power. So we're going to fuck with you. That's how this country works. I've said it before. I'll say it again. For you to gain power, you must conduct yourself in a manner that you have as few liabilities in your life as possible. Number one, the eradication of debt. Do whatever you have to do to get rid of debt in your life. Two, I used to say this, you know, you had two choices in this country. Get all the education you can with a master's being the minimum or start your own business. I have heavily leaned to, if you have a good job, you need to start a business small. You need to have something else going because any day your field could change, your industry could change, and you could become obsolete because it's moving. The world is moving like this. When I was a kid, shit stayed the same for years. Now, Six months, six to 18 months, new companies come and gone, new technologies come and go. It's that fast. And if you're not keeping up and you don't have the ability to train yourself, to learn really fast, to innovate, it's going to be tough in the next 10, 15, 20 years for you, whether you have a degree or not. Because here's another little secret. That little lie that was told to you by those colleges that, Hey, if you have a degree that you're going to make 500000 to $1.2 million more than a person with a high school degree, do this. Don't listen to me. Run your own numbers. If you pull out all the people who have to have a degree for their job, doctor, attorney, engineer, and then you flatline it with the rest of the regular old people, you know, say you got a degree in history or something, the earnings differential ain't that great. <laughs> it's not that great. <laughs> it is not. You're better off having a vocational skill that's in the, I have a buddy, you know, we went in the army, he went, um, Intel, you know, did crypto, he got out of the military in the 90s, making like 50 G's, in the 90s, when 50 G's was a lot, he doesn't have a degree, and currently he makes six figures, and he still doesn't have a degree, six figures, no degree, and recruiters call him every week, it's about the skill sets. It's not about the education. It's not about where you got that shit. It's about what you can do right now. And if you don't have the skills, you're fucked. Case of, that's it. Point blank. You're fucked. So, instead of whining and complaining, get the skills. Teach yourself. The internet, look, I, you know, I'm still learning this shit, but I've learned how to put together a video, <laughs> a blog. This is shit I didn't even know how to do two years ago. So, when I say you can do it, you can do it. So, start doing and stop Bitching. All right, this is Glendon. We're making money with storage unit auctions.